If you're looking to build a CRM for your business using no-code tools, then you've come to the right place. In this video, I'm going to be doing that very thing using Stacker. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, welcome back. If you're new here, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, a company that helps you to organize and automate more of your business using no-code tools. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, do check the links below and don't miss our upcoming webinar. Once a week, I do a free live training where I teach you the steps of building automated processes using no-code tools. So if you're interested in saving up to 20 hours of your time per week, check out the link below. Even if you can't attend live, you'll get a replay sent to you after the fact. But let's get to the heart of this video. We're talking about building that CRM inside of Stacker. Now in a previous video, I've already showcased how you can use the CRM template inside of Stacker. But the CRM template uses Google Sheets. So let's start there. We're going to pop into my screen and we're going to talk a little bit about how we can use other software like Airtable to support that backend ourselves. So here I've created a brand new CRM example. Now when I went to set this up, I made sure that I said I wanted to use Google Sheets. And so when I did that, it gave me the option of creating this CRM template. So this, the template itself is called the Sales Pipeline CRM. Again, you have to start by saying I want to create a new app just like this and then tell it that your data is stored in Google Sheets. You can set up with a template and then I chose the Sales Pipeline CRM. Okay. Now when you do that, it creates the back end for you, right? It creates the, in Google Sheets, the data structure, accounts, contacts, deals, and activities in this particular example. Now, a lot of times people will ask me, well, hey, I want to set up something in Stacker. I, I want to build the thing in Airtable though, or maybe you already use Airtable and you just want to build that front end there. Well, they don't yet offer the ability to tap into a template that way. So what you're going to need to do is actually build a different app that syncs to your Airtable data. But we can use this template that they've given us from Google Sheets to kind of give us some clues as to how we can set that up. All right, so the first thing I need to do is create a new Airtable base inside of my Airtable workspace. So I'm going to just say add a base, start from scratch, and I'll call this Airtable CRM from template. Now, once I have that in place, I'm going to want to import my data from Google Sheets. And Airtable has made this super easy for us. And the best part is it's going to really save us a lot of time in setting up our template here in Airtable. Let's go ahead and import data. And you can see that we have a bunch of options. We can do it from a CSV file, Microsoft Excel, and lo and behold, Google Sheets. We can also sync data from some other sources. Not going to do that in this particular video, but check this out if you're looking for new ways to sync data and keep your Airtable data synced with other outside sources. All right, for this purpose, here's that Google Sheet. So we can click on Google Sheets and you'll have to connect your Google Sheet account if you haven't already done so. You can do that just by clicking connect new Google account and go through the steps of getting it all synced up with your proper Google account. Now, since I've already done that, all I have to do here is click on Google Sheets because that is my account and it's going to have access to all of the spreadsheets that I have inside of my Google Sheets. Your next step is pretty simple. You just have to find the spreadsheet in Google Sheets that you want to import data from. And so in my case, it was just created a few moments ago. So it's right here at the top. I'm going to click on that stacker template CRM and select it from here. And it's going to automatically map all this stuff as it thinks I should have it in my app. And it does a pretty darn good job, if we're being honest. Now, you do see that it says click to edit field name and configure the field type. You can dismiss this if you want to. And I would recommend that you kind of go through this step by step before you import this data, right? Because there are probably a lot of places where you don't want the default settings quite as they've set them up here. So let's talk about how we can get that going. For example, website it defaulted this to a single select field. And the reason for this is probably because of the fact that we have the same website, example.com, listed every time. So we need to tell it, well, no, this is actually going to be a URL field, for example, right? So simple enough, just make these small changes and we should be good to go. 
We don't need this stacker ID here. That's not going to be important for our connection, but there's not really a way that we can get rid of this. We can't actually delete this particular field. Even if we right click, we don't have an option. So what I'm going to wind up doing is just importing all of this data and then ditching the superfluous stuff after the fact. Now let's take a look at contacts here. My contacts, pretty straightforward. I have titles. This could be text or it could be a single select field. I definitely want to change the email field to be email. So sure enough, you know, tell it what that data type is. Phone number should probably be a phone number. So again, this is just a little bit of data cleaning. It's really not that hard, all things considered. And Airtable's made it super easy for us. Now this profile photo is a URL. I wish that I could bring this in and import it in an attachment field type. But unfortunately, I don't have that option. You see that if I try to search for attachment, it's not available to me here. So that's not one of the fields that I can import data to. So what I might want to do instead is just, you know, copy and paste those files in manually. It's going to take a little bit of time, but all things considered, that's a small sacrifice considering how much of this is already all synced up. Now you will notice that the organization here is in this case, you know, we're looking at accounts, right? And if we flip into accounts, for example, I have this organization called real now. And if I look over here, sure enough, I have a real now that is my account. This is actually going to be that linked relationship in Airtable. Now, if we try to build that linked relationship from the data import, unfortunately, we are unable to do it at this stage in the game. So I would recommend that if you have a linked relationship or something that will become a linked relationship, as in this case, we're linking contacts to the organization or account. Well, then the best option for you probably is to keep it as a single select field for the time being. And we'll switch it over in a moment. Again, we have that stacker ID here. We'll ditch that as it comes to us. Let's look at deals. Now the deals of course have a title. So the name of the deal, the stage of the deal, the organization. Again, this is going to be that linked relationship from the deal to the account that is represented on that deal. So why don't we make this a single select field as well? That way it'll be a little bit easier for us when we build that link in a moment. We've got a summary. We have a contact. Again, a linked relationship from deal that takes us to the contact. So to save us a little time, we'll make that single select as well. We have the deal value that will come in as a currency, the deal source, which that's fine. A single select field looks good. And then the expected close date, which is a date. And of course, lastly, we have that ID again. Now, one more table. We have our activities links to contacts. Great. That's a single select links to deals. That's a single select. We're going to convert it. So one step at a time, again, we have our organization good there and the rest of this looks pretty good. We have our account manager, which if we scroll through here, it's the same manager on all of these. And so it doesn't look like that is necessarily related to the contacts table here. So we're going to keep that as is, and that looks pretty good. So let's give this an import and see what it does. Automatically, we have now our data imported. That was so simple. Didn't have to do a lot of copying and pasting and we're all set up. Now, something to note is that was a one time import. So if changes are now made to that Google sheet, that is not going to automatically show up in our Airtable database. The idea here is that we're importing the structure to Airtable so that we can do that quickly without having to, you know, tie up a lot of loose ends. All right. Speaking of loose ends though, it is important that we properly link these accounts and we should probably ditch that first table because it really didn't serve any purpose. So let's delete that table and we have our four tables, accounts, contacts, deals, and activities. Now you'll remember we couldn't build a link when we made that import. Now that we have the data, we can change it to a link. Now from the accounts perspective, we didn't have any linked fields here. We didn't have uh, a contact. We didn't have a deal or we didn't have an activity linked to the organization or account. So of course in Airtable, when we build that relationship, it will be reciprocal. Meaning if a contact links to an account, then so too must the account link to the contact. So let's flip into our contacts. And sure enough, we have that single select field that we imported that represents the organization. Well, we want this to be a linked relationship. So it's fairly easy for us to change it. We'd simply say link to another record and choose the table that we want this to link to. In this case, it's the accounts table. Can a contact be related to multiple accounts? 
The answer to that is entirely up to your business structure. In this particular case, it looks like every contact is only represented by one organization. So I can turn this off and say that a contact can only link to one account and save it. And you see that automatically those records are now linked to accounts. If I flip back into accounts, you'll see that no new accounts were created because the name of the account already perfectly matched. We're good to go. Now, if that name did not perfectly match, then it would have created new accounts that would only have a name filled out and nothing else. Let's flip into deals to kind of showcase that. Now we're going to link to the organization, but what if instead of wise bear, this was made plural. So wise bear had an S at the end of it. Well, we know that we don't have an account called wise bears in our accounts table. Wise bear is singular. So back in deals, if we change that to be a linked relationship, let's go ahead and link it up. We're going to say link to another record and this data lives in our accounts table. One link per record, save it. We're going to then again, see that it's now changed to a linked relationship. But if we flip back to accounts, sure enough, wise bears is now a new account. So the important takeaway here is when you're using this technique to link your tables together, make sure that you have everything matched verbatim. Otherwise new records will be created. In this case, I don't want this record actually here. So I'm going to break that link, move it where it should have been and delete that new record that was created for me. Now let's flip back into our deals again. And now we have to create a link from our deals to our contacts. We're going to set this up as well, build that linked relationship to contacts, one contact per deal, save that. And now that's all set. And this is all good. Now, again, we don't need that stacker ID, so I can ditch that here back into contacts. I'll ditch the stacker ID here back in accounts. I can ditch the stacker ID here. Again, that stacker ID is only useful in Google sheets to keep things kind of synced up and talking Airtable, by contrast, automatically has a record ID that it uses for each record. And so stacker talks with the software slightly differently. All right. Now, lastly, let's flip into our activities here and we need to build those linked relationships. So now we have properly built all the relationships that pre-existed inside of the stacker template. Now we can take this data structure that we replicated in Airtable and start building it in stacker. So flipping back into stacker, the first step is going to be setting up an app. So in this case, I have a dummy app here so that we could just kind of get started. So I'll add an app and I need to tell it that now my data is going to live in Airtable. I need to name the app, pick a color for the app. Let's make it orange or rust and change access as needed. Is this an app that only you need access to or all users in the workspace? I'm going to go ahead and create that it comes together really quickly. And we're going to be asked to get all synced up with our Airtable base. So the first step is getting our Airtable API key. If you're unfamiliar with that, all you need to do is go to your account, open up a new window and grab your API key, which will be right here. You can close out that window, go back to stacker and just paste that key in. Now the next step is going to be to get that base sharing link. Now in order to get that, let's go back into Airtable into the particular base that you're using for this template. Click on share in the upper right corner and you'll want to share the base. You can create a shared link to the whole base by clicking here and select a private read only link. And this link then is going to give anyone who has it access to read the data in your base. Now through its own magic stacker is going to be able to communicate with this base using this link. So we're going to copy this URL, pop back into stacker and paste that into our base sharing link field. We're going to say next. And within just a few moments, Stacker is going to read our data and set it up here. Now, once we've moved on, we have the prompt asking us to add our users to the base. So we can send invitations to email addresses or select a table with user data, or we can just pass on this and do it later. And the cool part about this is Stacker understands the relationships that we've already built in our Airtable structure. And you can see that it's already created all of those pieces for us. It's so intuitive the way that it all comes together. So if we go back into the Google Sheets template, you'll notice that 
we have the same system laid out. Deals, accounts, contacts, and activities. And again, back into our new system, accounts, contacts, deals, and activities. So of course, we can rearrange these however we need to, but the beauty of it is that these pieces are already properly interconnected. So if I drop into our contacts, for example, we're going to see the organization that they're related to, the deals that they're related to, and the activities that they're related to. So the structure of the database is already entirely in play for us. And that is what makes this so cool that once we've got the structure built already in Airtable, then it's a simple point and click getting it mapped to our proper database in order to get everything to show up for us inside of Stacker. Now, of course, there's a lot of customization to be done. We're going to need to edit our layouts. So this is where we can determine how we want this data to show up, what exactly we want to show up, because maybe some of it needs to remain hidden. We'll also need to make sure we upgrade that profile photo to be an attachment field in Airtable. But these are small fixes. By and large, the data is set up appropriately. And now it's just the occasional cosmetic tweak that we're gonna to need to apply in order to get everything to show up the way we want. I hope that this has inspired you to move your CRM into Stacker if you don't already have it there using Airtable as the backend database. The cool thing about it, again, is that it's just so intuitive and so easy to connect up. And if you ever wanna start tracking new data or add new things to your CRM, it's just so easy to go into Airtable, start adding that data, building out whatever you need, and then just resyncing Stacker with your new data structure. It's so, so easy to do, and it allows you to build the precise CRM functions that you need to run your unique custom business. I hope you got a ton of value out of this. If you did, be sure to check the links below and explore more of the content we put out, and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found that to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website and see how we can help. We offer a free Airtable crash course that will help you level up in Airtable quickly. And we also have some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts. We have some online courses and a group coaching program. And for advanced needs, we can build a bespoke solution for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.